Okay guys, Mr. Pulley here to finish up chapter four on Africa with hopefully a brief look at European imperialism. Okay, now European imperialism uh, in Africa peaks between 1877 and 1912 as Europeans rush to gain lands in Africa. This is the time period of the Industrial Revolution. We need raw materials. We need overseas territories as markets. And we need overseas uh, lands to kind of show that we are a powerful country. We've also got in this same kind of time period two countries that have just become countries as we know them, which are Germany and Italy. Uh, and during the Berlin Conference from 1884 to 1885, the Europeans sat down, sliced up, and divided Africa amongst themselves uh, without regard to the ethnic groups that lived there, some of which hated each other, but had been living with sort of, here's our borders, you're over there, we're over here, you stay there, we'll stay here, we won't have to kill each other. Well, Europeans come in, grab chunks of territories that include several of these groups together and try to combine them into one area, that's going to cause problems down the road. Okay, This is also done without regard to what the Africans want because there were no Af African representatives at the conference. Okay, The Europeans wanted, what do they want? Okay, raw materials Okay, to fuel their new industrial revolution and their powerful economies to grow and keep making more money so they can buy more weapons and show how powerful that they are. Okay, They want these large empires because this shows that they are a country to be reckoned with. And having that large empire requires a military and, again, shows how powerful we can be. Now, we also have this sort of third reason that they give, which is an idea of spreading Christianity. Uh, I think that's a bit of an excuse. They're really after these top first two things, and this is just why we're saying we're doing it. You know what I mean? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Hey, uh, we'll see in at least one case, this isn't a reason at all. Now, for the most part, when the Europeans come into Africa, we've got modern industrialized countries versus Bronze Age sort of peoples in a lot of cases. Um, the Africans are unable to resist because the Europeans had superior weapons. These guys have shields and spears and maybe arrows and stabbing spears. And the Europeans have rifles and cannons and long-range artillery, actually. They've actually even got the forerunners of the uh, machine gun and later on even machine guns. Uh, you do the math, which is going to work out, which is not going to work out. Okay. There are two exceptions. Uh, one group of guys, even with these small shields and spears, managed to defeat the British. That would be the Zulu under Shaka Zulu. Uh, hand them a couple of major defeats before eventually they get defeated. Sorry, you know, military technology is going to win. Uh, and then Ethiopia, which in fact had been a Christian country all along and manages to resist them. So Ethiopia, again, I said they are the exception, okay? They are the only country in Africa to resist imperialism by defeating the Italians in 1896, okay? The Italians coming in, again, late on the scene as a unified country. They had been a collection of city-states. They finally get unified, I think, in 18, 1844, 1845, and they come in to try and get this overseas territory and kind of fall on their faces in the process. Okay. Ethiopia had, in fact, been the only area of northern Africa to resist the spread of Islam when it started and remained a Christian country. So that idea of we're there to spread Christianity uh, certainly doesn't apply to Ethiopia. European uh, imperialism, the effects thereof, one of the things they do is create a money economy. And we think, Mr. Pulley, a money economy is a good thing. We have a money economy. It speeds up trade, makes it faster, more efficient. That means lower prices. Uh, that's a good thing, right? Well, in this case, it sounds like a good thing, but you've got to sort of transition there. When you do it all at once, you've got problems. Men are now forced to work in jobs provided by Europeans because they're the only ones who can pay money, especially early on. Okay, I got to get that money and before I can barter and trade before. And now I can't do it. I have to have money to buy things. Okay, so oftentimes the men are forced to move far away to find work to help provide for their families. Now we're splitting up families. Hey, I don't think that personally is a good thing. Other effects. Okay, the biggest effect of European imperialism on Africa is this. Okay, it reduced the influence of families and African customs. Okay, ideas of those strong beliefs on village and clan and families working together and extended families now get erased. Okay, the idea of a village raising a child now becomes a family raising a child, which sounds good again till you realize we've divided that family by making the men have to go off and work. And finally, 
looking at the idea, there's a problem, okay? And the problem that this creates is something that lingers to this very day. Uh, we see because the men are taken far away, sometimes we'll kidnap the women to turn them into sex slaves, prostitutes, okay? And that has contribu contributed to the massive AIDS problem that is, exists in Africa, uh, even today, even with the antiretroviral drugs that exist. Okay, that was a quick look at imperialism in Africa. Uh, we'll look at chapters four and five a little bit later on and some of the effects in those cases of your, uh, these uh, imperialism as these countries get their independence. Thanks for watching.